So we are waking up uh, in our hab in Lawville. Hub might be very close to the city, or you might have to take a train out to your hubs. To your hubs, yes, exactly. And you'll sort of see the scale when we get out to the city. <coughs> so let's wake up, Glenn. We'll get up. Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a night last night. Look at that. There's some beer, reading. <laughs> yeah, Glenn's, and this will be a personal choice. You can have a messy hab yes. or, or a clean. tidy hab. It'll be completely up to you how you want to hold your items, but uh, let's go, I don't know, it's kind of more, let's, let's get a cup of joe. Yep. So this is, uh, this is actually going to be showing off our... This is a more in-depth interaction system and how this can lead to missions because we want you to pick up things. We want you to interact with the world and be able to look <coughs> around and hunt for clues and those types of things. Go ahead and get your coffee. <coughs> right, so yeah, we have a cup of coffee. We have the, the interaction system where we can... Uh, Inspect it. Yeah, you know, look at all items so you'll be able to... So it's, it's a far... So in 3.3, you'll be able to look at your weapons, look at objects you pick up, and the long-term goal is pretty much most items in the world will be interactable. You can take them, you can move them persistent, you can store them in your spaceship, yep. you can store them in your hab. Um, and we're also uh, not in 3.3, but we're going to be expanding the player status system. We already have the stamina that happens and you need oxygen. But um, you know, as we're not going to go full core, like survival or hard sim, but you are going to occasionally need to drink some liquids or eat, eat some food. Uh, the other thing, longer term, short term in 3.3, it won't be so important, but we are going to move to what we call a physical inventory system, which means that uh, you have to be able to carry the things you've got. There won't be any sort of magic inventory where you can just go to your Moby Glass and pull out five different armor sets and 100 different weapons. So it'll be what you can carry on your person, or if you've got a bag or a backpack, or what you can put on your spaceship or what you can store on your hab. Um, or it will be all things that would sort of constrain your uh, equipment that you can have and use. And that would also be a reason as you play the game, you earn more money, you can buy bigger places, bigger spaces, more ships, more places to store it. But again, managing your equipment. It's meaningful is, choices. It's like I mean, a resource yeah. to manage. Yeah. yeah, it's basically we just want the players to make meaningful choices. I, I'm going to take this armor set and do this. I'm going to take this ship and do this. If you can pull it from anywhere, you're not making those hard choices. Uh, OK, so let's head out into uh, the common area of the HAB. We're on, I believe, HAB L19. L19 residences. Right, yeah. So uh, on the AI side, we'll see more of it we go on, but it's the early days of the AI going about their lives. There's a lot more that's going to come in. We have this usable system, I think we've talked about in the past, yeah. uh, that uh, longer term is what allows the AI to do everything from playing an arcade game to sweeping the, the floor to having a drink. Well, you even, food. even allowing the player to do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, and the, and the player, you can use the same systems and animations. Uh, and so we want to build a living, breathing city or locations. Because the, the thing is, in a multiplayer game, if you just rely on the players for the population, the problem is everyone's running around trying to do a mission or earn money and they're sprinting left and right. So the AI is very important to give locations a sense of life, um, which is uh, what we're um, going to be aiming for here. You're going to see more of it. We're going to go down to the base of L19. And when we look back at it, you'll sort of see it's a tall sort of upside down bracket. Uh, like here's the admin office in the, in the bit of L19. So again, that's where you could drop off or have things delivered. Um, you can sort of see how tall it is up on it. And let's I head out. I think this area holds 100 halves. Yeah, yeah so each building holds 100 halves. Yeah. So as more players come online and they would start in Lowville, we would actually have more of these buildings that would be populated. Yeah. So here we are. We're out here. This is. Uh, Looking out of the vista onto Lawville. Uh, see a fair amount of security. And uh, we, have this, 
the spaceport across the way? Yeah, Tessa Spaceport is the main spaceport of Lawville that's coming. And uh, you can't see if we ship, but there should be uh, ships uh, coming and going as well as uh, players. So we have ships that are actually coming out of quantum travel in orbit and coming down, landing on the pad or taking off. Um, but I didn't see any one of them. But that's because it's also systemic. So it doesn't always happen on cue because it's not scripted. Uh, and here we're just going to we'll carry on because we're going to show you a little bit of uh, Lawville. Uh, and this area is sort of the kind of, what, the L L19 worker area of it, yes. right? Yes, and the, I mean, this this is about selling the security building and the oppression of Hurston uh, yeah, towards so, its workers. So Hurston's a corporate uh, planet, and the Hurston Corporation owns and runs it. So as you see, a fair amount of security around. They're, a, they're maybe, I wouldn't say, the nicest employer. Uh, they want everyone to, to do their job and not complain, even if they don't get paid a lot, and the air quality is really bad. Uh, so uh, you know, you'll see a fair amount of Hurston security around. Uh, they will you know, stop and do checks on other NPCs, tell you to move on and hurry up. Uh, and here we are coming out onto, I think, the main plaza of this particular area. Uh, and uh, I think I think we call it leaves then, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and then, so we'll go into the bar. Yeah, and and bar, you know, we've I've talked about bars long term being locations you would go to get some gossip, find out what's yep. happening, maybe have some slightly shadier missions that you can accept versus the sort of more um, clean scrubbed ones that you would get on, yep. say, the job boards. I love that poster. Yeah, the hammerhead. So every now and then? Yeah, and no, we're in an active city, so we actually have full trains of transit. Yep. They were done. Hey. I just went by. Okay. <laughs> you all right? That's the light flickering. You want a drink or something? I need something? a drink. So this is our early implementation of the bartender, and you can order whiskey or you can order beer. So Glenn is going to do an Irish coffee yeah. in kind of a messed up way, not the proper way. What do you want? Appreciate it. Good choice. As I said, this is the 3 3 build. Yep. So There's visual still some glitches. Uh, like and gravity. some wonky gravity. <laughs> Fine once we get it. Yeah. It doesn't reset the gravity Clear vector on. until you actually pick it up. So. We got Ice Cube Simulation. There you go. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. And there is only one eight, there's only one cube in the whiskey, which yeah. is also very important. All right, let's have a drink. Let's not let's have a drink, but not too much. So again, in in the future, when we're talking about the player status, you'll be able to drink too much, stumble around. He obviously had a few drinks. Yeah. <laughs> so over here, we've got Maria of Heart. Um, this goes back to player status and uh, kind of the idea behind Death of the Space Man, where when you die, this is where you'll, or die, this is where you'll come back, and you'll be, respond here. Yeah. And then also when you get injured um, and the med pin takes you back to a certain percentage and then it, it will fade over time and then you'll need to actually get fixed up here, whether it's at a hospital or by the Apollo or Endeavor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the idea is the med pen is a short-term solution that stops bleeding and lets you operate for a little while, but if you don't go and get longer-term fixed up, the bleeding will come back and you'll eventually die. So even with med pens, you still need to go back and get medical yes. help and fix yourself up, just like repairing a, you know, you're like a ship, you repair yourself. Uh, so here we are, reclamation and um, disposal. The air is especially dreadful today. <laughs> there. 
still alive, I think. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Reclamation and Disposal. My name is Clovis Darnelli. Wonderful to meet you. What can I do for you on this fine day? Well, you gave us an invite about work. Let's ask about that. It's an excellent question. If you're not particularly concerned with shades of morality, I may have a lead on some, well, let's just call it questionable materials in need of forceful collection. The devil's in the details, I believe. Read them well. Okay, there's a uh, satellite that's fallen from orbit and it has a prototype blade in it we want to check out. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Wonderful. Best of luck. Okay, let's... Yeah, you'd, you'd have, a, you have a train, people getting on, getting off, yeah. sitting down in the seats, uh, just like you would get a normal commuter train. So. The usable system, the new usable systems only just come online. It's one of the reasons why you're not seeing that many of the actions that are going. But this is all physically real. We are traveling in uh, Lawville. Uh, and you can see, you can see out. You, go you look back, you see the tracks, right? And that's the... Uh, the uh, Hurston Dynamics uh, building, which is four kilometers high. Lowville itself is about 24 kilometers in uh, sort of diameter, the, the main area of it, uh, which is about equivalent to Austin, actually. So uh, Lowville's about Austin size in real world scale. So that's, you know, uh, I think it, not many games sort of do things at the level of scale that we're doing. Uh, so here we are coming into TISO Spaceport. And longer term on the transit system, we're going to have uh, line switching, uh, a lot more options that will be much more like a real, uh, you know, kind of metro system or, or track. Because right now it's, they sort it's of run point, point, to point to point B, B but yeah. we're going to have them um, like have actual m multiple stops that you're going off, multiple hub stops. Um, it's uh, anyway, it's fun. So there you are. And uh, whatever the whatever the train simulator out there, we're doing a little bit of that too. All right. There we go. I'm going to head to the spaceport, which would be the sure place. All property when clearing customs. Have all the relevant information ready for inspection. All right. So longer term with the law and order system that we're going to be working with, going between places, uh, you know, depending on what you carry, there'll be checkpoints. So you won't be able to necessarily, say, carry weapons or contraband. Uh, and that's kind of what these custom points are. They're not fully operating uh, yet, but that's the longer term goal. Won't be in 3.3, but as the law and order system comes in, that's all going to be part of it. And here we are. Just, just, just for the smugglers, that makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, you've got to find a backdoor entrance yeah. or how to come or how to hide it. And smuggling is a specific kind of gameplay that we are going to add to what's happening here. So here we're in the main concourse. And you can sort of look out. Yeah, ignore the glitching AI. We have lots of those. Um, there's a few ships on uh, part of that. That's actually, we'll go there later. Saw that. That's the Kraken. You can see the sides of the Kraken because it's got a cutlass on it and a uh, buccaneer, if you take a look and we zoom in. And the LODs in properly, there you go. So, it's not a small ship. <laughs> uh, I don't know, are there any ships coming and going? Why am not this building? I saw it, like, this morning. Do we disable the ships coming and going? I don't know no. what happened. No. Um, so, in the spaceports, you'll come, there'll be sort of hubs. So, normally, there'll probably be a ship dealer. There is actually a ship dealer on this spaceport. Uh, which we'll go and see later on. Uh, there'll be different lounges, so like maybe one for the Chairman's Club, one for sort of UEE, USO style 
one, uh, and then we're going to have various guilds that if you become a member, they may have their own sort of lounge in uh, the various spaceports. We're going to go and just retrieve our ship uh, to go on the mission. Uh, the rework. Yeah, we'll take the new Mustang, which has been reworked. Your ship yeah. has been delivered Not to the, the Aurora. <laughs> no. There you are. Landing pad, hangar four. So over in that direction, we can, we're going to go back and visit later on. Is actually where the ship dealer is, which is a big deal because in three three, when Hearst and Lawville are in, you'll be able to buy ships and also rent rent ships over here. So we'll have ship rental too. Um, you're not going to be able to buy all every single ship because we're going to have different uh, ship. Uh, dealers or places that will specialize, like here's an origin dealer or whatever. Uh, so, and there'll also be used ship dealers, like yes. we're going to have one on Levski called Teachers, yep. which will be fun, but we'll, we'll go visit this later. Let's go to, uh, oh, and down here, sorry, Glenn, yeah, Glenn's reminding me. Uh, long term, you're also going to be able to take uh, like transit, just the same like we have the transit system in the train, commercial transport to different locations on the planet or off world. So that would be where that would be down on the spaceport, and we would build that. So as an NPC, you could fly your own ship, or you could take a ship to get there, basically a Starliner. So let's go down um, to the hangar. And uh, in 3.3 of Florville and Hurston, we've got two hangar types uh, that we've built, which is the large hangar and the extra large, because they will hold every ship. Now, obviously, we're going to be in a large hangar, even though we're in a Mustang. It's too big of a... Um, really hang up for a Mustang, but... Where, it sells the scale. Yeah, you'll get a sense of scale, and uh, either for 3.4 or just after 3.4, the small hangar will come in, in line. There are small hangar well, like, it's, it's, places it's, in the spaceport, it's just we haven't finished the interior of the and, small and hangar. Th this is built out of our common elements, so the idea is that these... This is how we scale. You know, we, take the, we build these big elements, and then we can bring them down and build smaller elements out of that. So here's, here's the large hangar, which will fit lots of ships, yeah. not just a Mustang. Yeah. And again, longer term, on the we still have some AI going around, but uh, you know, people will be moving carts. Uh, when you land, they'll bring stuff over to your ship. Uh, so the long term goal is to have the AI uh, in the place, give it a sense of life, give it a sense of operation. So um, you know, your, they're coming out you to refuel helmet. your ship, coming out to fix it up, uh, all the rest of the stuff. All right, let's get our helmet on and uh, go for a flight. Got him in. He's a little blown out. Yeah. Oh, we can't hear him either. But he's yeah. like, okay, you got permission to land. <laughs> uh, permission to take off. Let's say take off, sorry, yeah, not land. <laughs> so, Glenn, can you look up or it's good? All the way up. There you go, our hangar doors are opening. And again, the hangar is all here, it's all physically correct, so. The hangar is in location, you'd see it outside. When you're playing it, you'll see other players coming and going, landing in the hangars. Um, so let's, uh, let's take off. Launch so. complete. So we're also introducing uh, the restricted zone. So you and can see the sort of red it. area, which is like you're not, until you're after a certain height, you can't fly on. Here we are, that's the Kraken that we were looking out on. Uh, Over there, right there is, is L19, where you uh, right? yeah. spawned. So this gives you a good sense of scale. And I don't know if we can see, but you, you should see trains run on the tracks. 
depending. I think there's tracks to the left there. I can't. Depending on timing. Timing, yeah. I'm just going to get up to appropriate height. And obviously, if you can see, Lawville's made quite a lot of progress from last year when we showed it uh, in the Art Corp demo at uh, CitizenCon. So we spent a fair amount of time uh, building it out and also building it in a way that uh, will be performance uh, for a city of this sort of scale. I think Ian increased the size of the building quite a lot too. Yeah, yeah but you get a sense of just how big uh, the main Hurston building is. And in uh, the goal is in 3-4 or just after it, this opens up as a whole separate area that you take a train to go visit in. Hurston's actually built out of six biomes. Uh, we've got desert, savanna, acidic, strip mines, trash, and polluted coast. So here you'll see the polluted coast. Um, if Glenn flew down towards the, the ocean. Yeah, and Hurston is, uh, I believe, about 2,000 kilometers in diameter. So it's about Earth size based on our ratio. So we're doing one sixth for the main planets, and that's mostly just for uh, traversal reasons, because it already, you'll see, it already takes quite a while to fly, not even that far of a distance. And uh, with uh, the old flight model, we had some of it, but the new flight model even more enforces it. So when you're down in atmosphere, the thicker it is, the harder it is for you to go fast. Um, so, okay. We've... So the, the goal for scanning, obviously, Hi, is to 100%. give you a general area that you need to go and scan in. You need to ping. And then from there, it's about hunting and finding what you need to actually do. So we found it, because Glenn knows where to go. Well, we went to the general mission marker, yes. and then we scanned it. Yes, but you saw it. And the scanning, I mean, the scanning um, gameplay is an ongoing thing. So we have quite yes. a lot of more stuff to come in terms of scanning uh, locations, ships, I mean, there's already some of it for mining, and there's already a bit of it for the ships, but in terms of what ships have, what the cargo, whether you can have things to block the scans, uh, figuring out what resource amounts are in distant areas. And that's what we would consider kind of short-range, mid-range scanning. Long-range scanning would be a different uh, aspect, um, and that is engaged. more about exploration. Okay, so here's the down satellite that we're just sort of going over the top, and we probably should find location to land. around the side. All right, we are down on the ground. Let's go check this thing. Turn it off. Let's 
sure we have a few weapons, just in case. And pistol, ammo. All right. I'm all about to pull. Okay, let's do it. So this is a Spana. Very different biome from what you guys saw before and what you've seen in our game. Yeah, and this is uh, early days on this. We've still got a lot more stuff to do on our uh, planet tech. Uh, obviously, longer term, we're going to have animal, like uh, fauna, animals, creatures. Yep. So there'll be natural wildlife depending on the place. Uh, there's going to be weather systems, so dynamic weather, um, you know, rain, snow, all the rest of it. Um, and uh, I'm actually looking forward to when we can have a real dense sort of jungle planet. I mean, Hurston's sort of been polluted, so the most you get is either this sort of kind of sparse savanna, or you're going to get the executive gardens. But All right, one more time. I did, Glenn like made that jump every single. Yeah. I, mean, I, I didn't see you miss that jump uh, until now. Twice. You got it. All right. <laughs> so, hit. So again, you're looking for a prototype blade. And this goes to the tactileness that we want. Is that the right one? It says nope. TDC 470. Now nope. we, need a, we need a TDC prototype XX. All right. All right. So we can just drop that. Uh, Exactly. Check this one out. Uh, no, it's the same one. So the prototype one does not appear to be there. There you go. So someone's probably gotten here first and taken the prototype. So what we need to do is figure out, and this is an example of a multi-part mission, right? So yes. this mission could have ended here and you had the prototype as one of the things, or it could carry on and someone's taken it. And in this case, someone has taken it. So we've got to figure out, find out where the prototype is. Yeah. We, yeah, we don't have impaling just yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have the physics question. So if we go in here, and this is an example of, uh, you know, like another thing you could do or a puzzle is the, the satellite shut down, but if we maybe get our multi two out uh, and perhaps cut away those restraints there. Get rid of that. Cut those. Falls off. And there'll be things in the game that will let you read what you can use a pour on. Reset it, and hopefully it will allow us to track where the prototype is. Okay, we restart the satellite's internal system, and uh, there's a prototype somewhere, so let's go find it. Okay. 
there music played in any of this stuff? Is there any music? Is there music? Oh, this here. I think it's mostly in this one. There's some. We don't have our eye. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't looking good. Uh, there's a cutlass. Hey Chris, if you're out there, I may need some there's help. Someone here. else, and this would be an example of someone else getting the same mission, mission to come yes. and get there. They've sorted our ship, and uh, they've decided to take it out and then try to go for the prototype. And I believe you just called your friend. Can you cut to camera two? Chris, can you go? Chris, go third person. Okay. So, this is our friend that we just called. He's showing up. Uh, let's cut, show the uh, tail side cutter as well, I guess. Cut to camera three. There we go. So this is the Anvil Valkyrie, and it is the first camera two, first straight to flyable ship that we've done. So it's a Anvil drop ship, uh, and uh, it's going to feature also in Squadron 42, and this will uh, launch with 3.3. .3. Take okay, out five, take out four. Yeah, let's get rid of the bad guys. Take out, take out the bad guys. Cam uh, camera one, Glenn, where are, you, where are you? Let's see where you're going. Where are the, where are the bad guys? <laughs> okay. Glenn is DC. There we go. Uh, that's a sink issue. Oh, we lost the... He's out, right? I can see him on camera too. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Done. We're still having some sync issues in the multiplayer. Uh, all right, I think we, we killed, the, killed all the bad guys. Yes, we have. All right, let's bring it down. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a big rock. Let's avoid that one. There we go. Oop. Okay. All right, it's up, buddy. All right. Thank you very much, hey? Should we do a little talking? You guys got the foie pan or not? You got the foie pan, I was wondering if you'd said something to each other. Hey, buddy. Hey, how's it going? 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 Hey, how
Let's get on it. Yeah, yeah let's walk up to him and see if he's... Thanks, Thanks for the help, man. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, no problem. Okay, let's close it. <laughs> Alright, uh, so this is the Anvil Valkyrie. Uh, it is, like I said, uh, Anvil's uh, dropship. Both sides, there's side guns uh, you can deploy. Remote turrets. Uh, it's a bit risky. We still have the desync on the ladder, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we can take a tour of the bottom. Well, yeah. Let's just look around the bottom, Glenn, and then I think we're heading to where the prototype blade is. Go through but, the doors. Uh, it's bottom. You can go up there to where the uh, flight area is. I think if we open up here. It will take us to. It's kind of dark. There you go. Open door. There you go. Whee. And this is where the crew can sit. Uh, this will carry like 20 folks. I think this is probably to the turret in the front, right? Yeah. So the, the, front. the down turret? The down turret in the front. Or the bottom turret. And then. Uh, sleeping quarters upstairs. Um, but if we go back, we've got. Uh, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. Okay. All right. So we're heading to uh, we're heading to where the uh, prototype uh, thing is. And hang on. No, it's camera back, six. Back to camera six, please. So that's <laughs> yeah, pretty hard for a AA here. Why don't player one and player three have a little fun? Yeah. Okay. of the Temporal Cyclone, which is also going live for 3.3. Yep. Um, so we, we have this, the racing version, uh, I think the uh, this one, but do we have a camera on the side? I think all versions of them are okay. going. All right. We got rid of... I think we got rid of all of them. All the AA? All right, yep. so... Oh, oh. We did improve the rocks. You don't run over every single one of them now. Yeah, that's one of the AA turrets. Yeah. That's another AA turret we took out. And again, this will be another optional continuation of the mission. So another type of missions that we have in 3.3 yes. uh, on Lawville or Hurston, actually more Hurston, is uh, underground facilities. So yes. this is the very first example of underground systems. So we're going to have underground facilities, caves, uh, other kind of things. And this particular one, this happens to be a kind of, uh, I don't know, waste storage. I think it was dump. it was used for refining. Refining, and, right? Uh, but we'll go check it out. So let's go. Let's you go guys down. are too good a shot. You left nothing for us. What's that? What you say? Too good a shot. Oh uh, uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's go in down to the facility. Okay. 
Okay, so here's the other part of the mission is FPS uh, AI edition. So this is cooperative uh, gameplay against FPS AI. Currently, I think in 3.3, you have missions to support it for AIR, yep. and then we're going to have missions that are supporting around cursors like this underground one. So this is our first pass on it. You guys have been working very hard on getting all the behaviors working properly. Hit reaction. Oh, I saw one more guy. Can we cut to Scott? My shoot, man. You too. And again, diegetic, VoIP and VoIP will be there. So when you're there, you can talk to your, when you've got people in your team, you'll be able to talk to them. So, and it'll all be automatic based on who you make friends and everything. So in this particular case, you wouldn't need to be linked up in Discord or TeamSpeak or anything. As long as you're in the team, if you're all there, it'll be like operating in a real world fire group. So I think here is where the CDC is. All right, prototype TDC XX. Okay, and we've uh, we've we've recovered the blade now. So this is the second part of the two-part mission, and now we've got to take this back uh, to our drop point yes. in Lawville. Yes. To get paid. To get paid. Now the question is, did you get everybody? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so one of the things that we've been working on is kind of the knockdown system, staggers, those types of things. Uh, we need to do some internal play tests a little bit more, but ideally we roll that out soon. This is giving me notes for the, <laughs> for me to fix on the mission. Oh, uh, <laughs> just saying, well, wouldn't it be cool if a few other people stopped out of the yes. popped out on your way back up? We will add reinforcements. Follow the sun, Glenn. Don't stare at it too long. But. All right, let's head back to uh, Moville. Is this 
a special color. Oh yes, so we would say that the, the Valkyrie that's been flown here is a special Citizen Con edition that uh, if you get a Valkyrie during Citizen Con or within this week, I think you get to have this color as opposed to the standard. Um, we have a digital gray camo and uh, those are two options. There, there's a military version, but that's just as much as Roger that. All right. So we're going to head back to gate two. Close to the city, um, this is a no-fly zone, and uh, this is our early, early implementation of no-fly zones. Um, eventually, we will have paths that you will need to stick on. You will need to to, uh, to follow. So, very similar to what you get with real-world airports, um, you, can, you just won't be able to fly anywhere and everywhere over the city under a certain altitude. Get to player six. All right, let's it. Our drop off point is right by gate two, so rather than fly all the way in and then take a train out to the perimeter, we're going to land out here because we can't go in closer because of no fly zone and then drive to gate two and get to sort of check out the outside of Lawville as well. Thanks for the ride, man. Thanks, sir. Again, that was us using the void, void situation off of the team. We cut the player three. Player three. There we are on player three now. Oh. Yeah, you can appreciate the size and the scale of Lawville. So we're now down on the foot. You can sort of look up. If you look up, uh, Glenn. Ah. <laughs> it's pretty big. And this is what you fly in and out of. I mean, I think one of the nice things with Star Citizen is just the sense of scale uh, that you get, uh, but also the sense of detail when you're down there on yeah. foot. So it's all the, you know, you can see things, you can interact with them in your hand. Uh, you know, we've got millimeter precision for that, but we've got scale that goes to billions of kilometers. All right. Let's just put this through here, we should be okay. We're not getting custom interview, but longer term, again, we're saying the law and order system, scanning. Keep it going, people. You try and sneak through things, maybe a scan sets off something, you get, 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 get taken to the interview. Taken to customs. Yeah. And here's the use of uh, the sort of drop box uh, that we're putting into 3.3, uh, so as well as admins that you can pick up and drop things from. Uh, this is also allowing you to drop off stuff, so this is sort of a, a drop that we're going to do, which is uh, to complete our mission. Clovis doesn't like to get his hands dirty. Yeah, exactly. The use of weapons within Your we just place it. Paramount to us. Like that. Done. Now, the mission is... You are subject to all personal law and 
There you go. Yeah, deliver the cargo. We're done. So now we're going to catch the metro. Hopefully, the metro line uh, from the perimeter doesn't run as frequently no, as they want. No, no. Uh, Anybody from Europe will understand. That. So let's get up there and see what's happening. I think we got a little bit of a wait. Person security reserves the right to search travel. The train, run, 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 run. Get in it. Uh, seven. Five. Oh, yes. You uh, made up for your two jumps, buddy. It, it, it's literally a five minute uh, wait on the perimeter. So that was good, because we're running behind schedule yeah. anyway, so. <laughs> there you go. So be able to show trains in transit, just so you understand where you're going, how to get there, and where it's at. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7. Step away from the platform edge when train is approaching. All right. How long is it? Is what's it? It's like a 15 second. It's a 30 second wait. It is. Yep. Trespassing or attempting to trespass on train tracks. If it was 30, then or if it was 20, we wouldn't have made the last one. Right? Yeah. That was pretty. <laughs> Reserves the right to search travelers at any time. So ideally, ideally we get a ship for you. Since uh, yes, since after all that, we should that. buy a ship. I think. Next session's up. <laughs> gotta, gotta move it, bud. Yeah, don't break your legs. <laughs> yeah. Head into New Deal. So in in three three one person law building, you'll be able to rent ships and also buy ships. Renting ships obviously will be more uh, economical in the short term because ships themselves. Well, it lets you try them out. Yeah, let's try them out, and they also cost money. So it's a it's an opportunity to rent something yes. to use it, figure it out. So uh, here's the New Deal. A couple of obviously ships that are coming in three three. There's the Phoenix. Thing right there, the new Mustang. And of course, to the right is yeah, it's just a pretty, pretty looking ship. Yeah, the Hammerhead, the big boy. Again, another ship that's uh, coming with 3.3. I think uh, the Avocati just started to play with it and have uh, fun. Uh, it's, probably, have it's probably a bit out of our price range. Yeah, definitely out of our price range. <laughs> we don't have that much money. 
Uh, so let's go in and get something that's a little cheaper for us. Yeah. I think Mustang, uh, maybe a hundred thousand or something. Uh, I'd have to take a I'd have to look. This is our first pass at. Uh, we, we're still working on the economy. There's a whole matrix in terms of how much material things got, the manufacturing quality, the brand. Uh, it's the same for items. Uh, so we have a matrix that's done to work with the dynamic economy on ships and on items. Obviously, there's still going to be. Hello some... and welcome to the New Deal shipyard where there ain't no such thing as too low of a deal. He just went in Take last night. Take a look and just breathe it in. Yeah. You know, it's a little yeah, the lighting So yeah, like, uh, I don't know how much. That's okay, 600. Which uh, <laughs> is the Aurora? 220,000. I don't know how the 85X is that much more expensive. But uh, let's we can get a prospector maybe. Glenn's been wanting to buy. Yeah. All right. There we go. And we have a prospector we can now fly. Uh, and there we go. That is the end of the mission demo.